Hi there. Uh, you'll be able to find all the lectures and the worksheets that go along with the lectures if you're going to be doing them in paper form or if you know somebody who doesn't have access to the internet and they need paper forms, uh, tell them they can go to the high school office and everything that I'm doing online is available in, in paper form at the office. So there'll be lectures and uh, worksheets. Hopefully they'll be able to get online to see the lectures. They're on YouTube. All right. Welcome to Algebra 2 Online. Uh, we're going to be graphing circles in the coordinate plane and we're going to identify the radius and the, and the center. And I'll be going in and out of the frame. I just hope you guys can see this. Uh, the equation for a circle in standard form is of this general form right here. Uh, H, K, and R are going to be numbers. And if we can see H and K, whatever numbers they are, we're going to know automatically the center of the circle. H and K, the center of the circle is going to be the ordered pair, H, K. And so it's going to be the opposite of what we would expect. We say that's counterintuitive. For instance, if this is X plus 4, there will be a negative 4 here. If this is Y minus 3, we'll put a positive 3 here. Whatever these numbers are, are going to be the center of the circle, and it's going to be counterintuitive. The radius of the circle is going to be the square root of whatever this number is. Okay, so this is the general form. We're going to move from the general form to a couple of specific examples and find centers, radii, and we're going to graph uh, the circles. That's the idea anyhow. Hopefully that'll work. If I'm asked to write the equation of a circle and I'm given the center and the radius, what I want to do is take the general case, which we just did right here. We're going to take this and we're going to plug in H, K, and R and do the basic arithmetic there, and we'll be looking at the equation of the circle that has a center at negative 4, 3, that's an ordered pair, from the origin, 4 to the left, and 3 up, that's where the center of the circle will be, and it'll have a radius of 4. So here's our general case, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared. So here's our h, here's our k, Here's our r, so I'm just going to plug them in. x minus negative 4 quantity squared plus y minus 3 quantity squared is equal to r squared. Well, 4 squared is 16. So if I was looking for an equation of a circle that has a center at negative 4, 3 and a radius of 4, this is the equation I would be looking for. Notice that these are counterintuitive. The center is negative 4, 3. This is positive 4, negative 3. That's because we run into double negatives, which will make it positive. Okay. Normally, I'd say, are there any questions? But since we're doing this online, I'm just going to hope that this makes sense and proceed onward through the following. If we ask you to write an equation of a graph circle, well, it's the exact same thing we just did here. We're given the center and the radius. In, in this case, we can see the center and the radius. And since we can see the center and the radius, we just write it down. The center would be 2, negative 3. Our radius will be the distance from the center to any point on the circle. And we can count it right here. The radius is 3. And now we can write the equation of this circle using our general case, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared. And we make these substitutions, and we'll be looking at the equation of this circle. I have x minus 2 quantity squared plus y minus negative 3 quantity squared is equal to 3 squared, which is 9. So this equation right here is the equation of this circle. Now what that means is there are an infinite number of ordered pairs, x, y, that if I graph all of them, 
they'll fall on this circle here. Infinite number of ordered pairs such that if I go from the origin over so far and up or down so far, I'll land on this circle. And every one of those ordered pairs has an x, y that if I plug them in here, this equation will be true. There are an infinite number of solutions to this equation, and when we graph them, they all fall in a perfect little circle. The center, in this case, right here, and the radius of three circles. Onward through the following. If we have a circle with the center at the origin, it'll look like this because we're going to go, we won't be moving left or right or up or down from the center of the origin. So we're going to have our center right, is going to, you can think of this as x plus or minus zero squared plus, oops, that was messy. You can think of it in standard form as x plus or minus zero quantity squared plus y plus or minus zero quantity squared equals r squared. And that will put us at the origin, zero, zero, x plus zero is x, y plus zero is y. the equation of the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 25, after it has been translated as indicated. Now translation, we may remember, we take any figure that's been graphed and we slide it left or right or up or down. So if I want to go two units down, I think, well, up and down is y. So if I want to take this circle and shift it down two units, I'm going to go like this, x squared won't be affected because x affects left and right movement plus y squared. And to go down two units, it's counterintuitive. So we're going to go plus 2. Okay. These, these are always counterintuitive. Equals uh, 25 stays the same. So if I have this circle that has a radius of 5 at the or and the center's at the origin, and I want it to shift down two units, it's called a translation. It would just be x squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 25. This tells us we're going down two units. It's counterintuitive. If I want to go three units to the left from the origin, left and right is controlled by x's, so we're determined by x's. So our x is going to be in, para in, parabola no, in parentheses, and it'll be three units left will be plus 3 because it's counterintuitive plus y squared is equal to 25. Okay, so here's a general case of a parabola or a circle at the origin. And there's some translations. If we wanted to take a circle that's at the origin and move it seven units right and one unit up, it would go like this. Still going to have a radius of 25, or a radius of 5. 7 units to the right, counterintuitively, that would be negative 7. 1 unit up, counterintuitively, up would be positive, so we'd say minus 1. Any questions? All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, this would be a circle, the radius of 5. We can think of, remember, this can be thought of as x plus or minus zero. So we can look at this and see the center of the circle would be zero, negative two, which is two units down, with a radius of five. This would be three units to the left. The center would be negative three. By the same token, we can think of this as y plus or minus zero. and say, well, this has a center at negative 3, 0. y squared can be thought of as y plus 0 squared. 
gradients of five. So forth and so on. Okay, I'm going to go to the next page. You, if you're following along on the worksheets that you picked up at uh, the office, or if you've copied them off of the internet, we'll switch over to page two. Uh, that's the back side of the lecture, and we'll just keep going. If you are asked to state the center and the radius of a circle, you just go like this. The center is the ordered pair, three, negative one. Counterintuitive. You'd think it would be negative three, one, but it's not. It's counterintuitive. The radius is the square root of this number, and the square root of one is one. Okay, so there's the center and the radius. If I were going to graph this, I'd go three to the right, down one, and then I'd have all of the points that are one unit from that center, which we'll graph here in just a second. Uh, the center of this one, now remember, if y is squared is all by itself, you can think of it as y plus zero quantity squared. And so if I'm looking to find the center, the center would be negative five, zero, ordered pair, negative five, zero, counterintuitive. And the opposite of zero is zero. It's the only number that is its own opposite. And the radius would be the square root of nine, which is three. Oops. Yay. Uh, if we're asked to find the center and the radius here, again, x squared can be thought of. You don't have to write it out like this. But you can think of it as x plus or minus zero. And so if I wanted to find the center of this circle, I would say the center is 0, positive 5, and the radius is the square root of 289, and the square root of 289 is 17. So this circle has a center of 0, 5, and the radius would be 17 units long. And here we have one that's centered at the origin. Uh, we could think of it as x plus or minus 0 squared plus y plus or minus 0 squared is equal to 11. So my center would be the opposite of 0, which is 0 in each case. The center would be 0, 0. That's the origin. And the radius would be the square root of 11, which is radical 11. We don't know what it is, so we'll just leave it in radical form. Okay, so that's how we look at an equation and determine the radius and the center at a glance if it's written in standard form, which these are. And it makes them really, really easy to graph. If we we're going to graph these circles, if I said graph this, well, I'd say, well, I know that the center is at 3, 2. So I come over to my Cartesian coordinate plane and from the origin, I go over 3 and up 2, just like we did in pre-algebra. There's the center of my circle. I know that my radius is the square root of 16, which is 4. So if my radius is 4 units, all the points that are 4 units from this center will be on this circle right here. So I'll go over 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll go a little bit off my graph. That's OK. I go 1, 2, 3, 4. I can go up 1, 2, 3, 4 down one, two, three, four. And that gives me a real good idea of where my circle is going to lie. Uh, when you're graphing your own circles, the, the most common mistake I see kids make is they'll make their circle look like this. That's, that's not a circle. Don't do that. Try to make it look like a circle. I'm not expecting perfection, but at least try to make it look like a circle. Uh, I have a little tool that I'll try to use it to see how work, this works. Start at the center. Come out and see if I can hit this. Something like that. Those points, all of these points, have x, y coordinates. Infinite number of points that have coordinates, ordered pairs, that will make this equation true. And that's how we graph it. Uh, if I'm going to graph this one, I, I can see that the, the center is going to be at the origin, because we can think of this as x plus 0 quantity squared plus y plus 0 quantity squared is equal to 9. So my center 
is at zero, zero, which is right here. And my radius is going to My radius is going to be 3, square root of 9. So it's going to be all the points that are 3 units from the center. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And I'll use my tool again. Let's see if I can draw another circle. That one's a little more horrible. But you get the idea. Okay, okay, that's graphing circles uh, on the worksheet that's a, go, going with this assignment that's with this lecture. It'll be multiple choice and you'll be given an equation and you'll be given four graphs and you have to determine which graph matches up with the equation. So what you want to do is find the center and the radius and then find which circle has the right center and the right radius. Like if I said uh, which one of these circles matches up with this you would hopefully be able to tell me that it's that sort of there. But it's going to be multiple choice. You probably won't have any trouble with it. Best of luck.